Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the next part of our International Social Media Day here in IT Tower. The cameras are rolling, as you can see, and uh, we are now moving on to the National Seminar Series part of today, which is a presentation funded by the Teaching and Learning Forum uh, for the Enhancement of uh, Technology in Higher Education funded this following research and presentation into social media as a tool to enhance the first year teaching and learning experience. As I said earlier, my name is Glenn Mehta. I lecture social media in the Department of Management here in the School of Business and Humanities of IT Tala. Um, in today's presentation, I've been asked to introduce, what, first of all, what the Teaching and Learning Forum is all about. The vision of the forum is it is a sectoral network established to enhance teaching and learning in Irish higher education organizations aiming at championing, inspiring, developing, mapping, building, promoting, enabling, and researching in the areas of technology in higher education. The National Forum is uh, funding a national seminar series of which this is the first one of many to be held here in IT Tala. The purpose of the forum is to promote innovative, fresh thinking uh, from exemplars to national fr uh, frameworks, from discrete projects to comprehensive change, and the theme of today's uh, seminar is part of ma making transition, making the transition to higher education, and particularly what I'm talking about today, what I'm going to be presenting about, and indeed what Stephen will talk about later on, Stephen Howell from Microsoft, and the panel uh, for the second half of the two-hour seminar, will talk about how social media can help make the transition to education for school leavers and also mature students returning to education, and how it can help in education, in other words, how social media can make uh, education, uh, we can disseminate information better to our students and can help the class dynamic. In a moment, I'll start by presenting on my current research into live tweeting in the classroom. So the transitions themes of the National Forum is aimed at not just school leavers, but also making the transition back to college or to college for the first time for mature students, which is extremely important for IT Tala and the National Forum itself, as well as making the transition from education to work. And we pride ourselves here in IT Tala and particularly in the Department of Management of creating uh, industry ready graduates so that we give them the skills, we give our graduates the skills that are needed to make them employable as soon as they leave us rather than having to go and do add-on or supplementary courses. And also we will talk about, or the National Seminar Series indeed talks about making the transition from uh, for international students, of which we have many here today, coming to a study in a different country. These are the main themes of the National Seminar Series, but the one that I'll focus on in this next two hours, and the panelists as well, will be on making transitions to education, um, including the, um, the, the mature students, as I said. The second hour of the two hour will be focused on the panel, and our, uh, my head of department, Dr. Phil Mulvaney, uh, in about an hour's time, will focus, will moderate that panel, and our panelists will join me at the front to discuss social media's impact in education. But before we start on that, I'm going to give you a brief uh, introduction, and I'll, I'll try and keep it brief, um, a brief introduction into my research into live tweeting in the classroom. Now, what's it all about? What's live tweeting and why Twitter? Well, there's lots of social media, as you guys know. For those of you who study social media with me, you, you're very familiar with what I'm about to look at now. There's many big, particularly foreign American brands that we use quite a lot here in Ireland. The big dominant Facebook, of course. Twitter, uh, one, of the, one of the biggest in the world also. So why did I pick Twitter over Facebook for my research into live tweeting? It's because primarily of the public nature of Twitter. Twitter is by definition much more public compared to Facebook, which is obviously much more personal. And many of the other social media that I decided not to go with, once again, are much more personal. There is that sense of um, inappropriateness if an educator at any level decides to connect with their students at any level or any age via Facebook. Now that's for a discussion for another day, but that's one of the primary reasons why in this research I focused on Twitter, not Facebook. Because it's more public and because it's acceptable and, and it's expected that students at all levels would be engaged with Twitter to keep up to date with um, key journalists, politicians, indeed celebrities and favourite bands, etc. But also news feeds on the topics that they need to be aware of for their education. There are many other social media brands, I highlighted the most popular in the world there, but we shouldn't forget there are newer or emerging brands that perhaps will, if we're delivering this same 
themed presentation next year would be the ones that we are talking about a little bit more. Some of these are quite new, some have risen to prominence in the last couple of months, a couple, a couple of years or maybe a year and a half. Some of them have been, say, swallowed up by the big players, Facebook, like Instagram, and indeed many young people are leaving Facebook, in their millions in America, by the way, to join sites like Instagram and Snapchat and more modern sites. Suffice it to say that internationally, there's many, many social media brands, some of which here in Ireland we've probably never heard of, and we can even subdivide our social media brands by conversation. Now, all of these slides will be available on ittdublin.ie forward slash smart. In fact, they're already there, so there's no need to take anything down, and you can see this in more detail yourself in your own time. I know it's quite difficult to see there. Suffice it to say, we can subdivide our brands and social media by specific of purpose of conversation. The social media that we use perhaps for uh, chatting, online chatting versus online dating versus collaborative work versus sharing photographs or music or video streaming, etc. The main reason, as I said, I picked Twitter for this research is it's simple, it's easy to use, it is also uh, more public, and it is not blocked in IT Tala. Facebook, like many educational establishments and companies and organizations, Facebook happens to be blocked by a large proportion of educational establishments and companies because they don't want their workers, or indeed in college, they don't want their students keeping all the computers busy with Facebook. This also happened with Bebo and MySpace maybe seven, eight years ago. Twitter, because it's, in, it's encouraged by lecturers that students follow specific Twitter feeds, is not blocked in IT Tala. And that was one of the other dis deciding factors for me choosing Twitter. My research into Twitter and into live tweeting is the use of it to increase student engagement with lectures and to improve revision. It was a simple idea. I wanted to see if by encouraging students to live tweet in class, it could help them be better students. I don't mean better behaved students. I mean to learn more, to remember more, to have better exam performance, to be more engaged in class, to contribute in class, particularly for the shy learner, and to develop a range of skills that our research, as part of the Department of Management's research two years ago into our programmatic review, found from industry and other stakeholders were the key skills that were demanded by employers of business graduates. And to and all graduates needed the sim similar skills, but I was involved in the, the business graduate research. So the aim is to examine the use of Twitter as a collaborative learning tool and revision aid within the educational environment and to, develop, to determine if microblogging in the form of live tweeting can effectively develop students' key transferable skills for the workforce, as well as improve assessment, revision, and learning as a whole. Now, live tweeting involves simply while the students are listening to a lecture in class, they tweet, they summarize through their smartphone devices or indeed through a tablet, and we provide two iPads for this to our students. We pass them around for, for those who don't have a, a smartphone or don't wish to use their smartphone. We have Wi-Fi enabled iPads which students use, and they are encouraged to summarize everything I'm saying, and that's the idea of live tweeting. This is not unique to education. It's quite common, as I was telling some of our colleagues over lunch just an hour ago, it's quite common in the entertainment industry in the United States, where uh, people going to the cinema or theatres uh, for plays on Broadway, for example, would be encouraged to take out their phone. It's my idea of hell if we go to a movie and somebody's on their phone and annoying you. Don't know about you, but that really bugs me. In America, it is encouraged, but not in the entire auditorium only in what's known as tweet seats, where new shows on Broadway or any other uh, theaters, and also new movie shows when they are released in the cinema houses in the United States, they encourage people on a certain number of rows in a certain part of the theater to take out their smartphones and tweet using a designated hashtag, which flashes up on the screen in the cinema or is read out by the announcer in the theater to encourage them to categorize their tweets as part of the discussion. Why do they do that? It's marketing. It's digital marketing. They want to get a buzz about people um, uh, talking about the show or the movie. They want to get people retweeting it, resharing it, and hopefully get the snowball or ripple effect. Uh, the ripple effect is something I talk about in my book, Infinite Ripple, The Social Media Revolution. And that's the idea of the ripple effect, the snowball effect, is to try and get people to talk about something digitally through social media platforms. 
How do we categorize these tweet seats or indeed live tweeting in education? We give a designated hashtag. In today's social media day, we have a tweet wall and this tweet wall uh, at the very beginning this morning, we asked people to use a designated hashtag, hashtag smart for business. And all of the tweets appear in real time on this tweet wall. And that's an example of how live tweeting can help engagement because uh, people see what others are thinking about and it is public, remember. The research approaches, I should tell you that this research is ongoing. It began last September and it'll be ongoing until next August. It's a one year project funded by ITT Dublin as part of the, uh, the Teaching and Learning Fellowship um, of ITT Dublin, of which I'm one of four Teaching and Learning Fellows. And this seminar here uh, is, part, is, is a way to disseminate some of the initial findings only. The final findings will be presented only in August, September next year, and we'll keep you updated through the SMART uh, website, itdublin.ie forward slash SMART. Last semester, I tried this with the first year group from September to Christmas uh, in the Learning to Learn module in the winter semester. They were told, they were asked, and I, they were told it was voluntary by the way, they were asked to summarize everything I said during class, once again, to use their own smartphones, or to use the iPads which we passed around. The hashtag that was predefined, they were encouraged to use. The iPad mini and smartphones were, were, were provided. Well, the smartphones weren't, but most of the students had a smartphone. Um, this semester, the spring semester here in IT Tala, we've expanded it to six more groups. One of them are here in taking up about four rows. That's first year in the, the IT management and computing stream who study social media communications with me every week. Um, and, and they might be able to volunteer some examples later on on how they think it's going. But my initial research is based on last semester. Um, the last semester I tried it with a module where there was no exam. This semester we are trying it with a variety of modules and not just first years. First years and third years in a range of disciplines are being encouraged to live tweet. Some of them are 100% CA or continuous assessment modules where there is no final exam. Others, there is a final exam. And one of my key areas I want to find out is the following. Is live tweeting more relevant if you have a final exam that the student needs to study for, where you have a list of tweets, of potentially thousands of tweets, uh, that is a ready-made revision tool? I wanted also to find out, um, I wanted through the ongoing research to find out how it, it, it contributes positively or negatively to class engagement. My live tweeting hypothesis is the following. So reading up about it before I put in uh, my application for this research, my hypothesis was that live tweeting should develop students' multitasking skills. All of these skills are key things that our stakeholders said were demanded by our graduates of IT Tala, particularly business graduates. Develop their multitasking skills, listening skills, because they have to listen before they can live tweet, before they can summarize, and indeed it does develop their summarization skills. skills. It encourages their use of modern communications technologies, even if they have no desire to work in the ICT or indeed the social media sector, there's very few jobs in Ireland or elsewhere where you do not need to know information technology or information and communications technology, let alone need to have a working knowledge of social media. So it encourages them to develop these skills in modern communications. It should motivate group work and collaborative learning. Because only if the entire class live tweet together does this project work, or if the majority of the class do it at least. It provides, why, does, why is that so? Is because it should provide a rich resource of database of hundreds or perhaps thousands of summaries of 140 characters or less. Another reason why I picked Twitter, it forces students to summarize down to 140 characters or less, in fact less, because they have to use a hashtag. Uh, of all the key points, which is then publicly available as a revision aid for them. It also drives buzz around the hashtags because they feel they are contributing to a conversation in a structured way. Entertainment, sports, popular culture does exactly the same. If you watch a television program, you will see a hashtag encouraging you to comment. In Ireland, the Vincent Brown evening uh, talk show on current affairs has one of the most popular trending hashtags every day that it's broadcast and the following morning, and that's hashtag VINB, Vincent Brown. Why? Because we are encouraged to tweet using that hashtag so that we are part of a conversation. The X Factor, football games, Man United, Paris Saint-Germain, any of the big teams, they will encourage exactly the same. 
Use the hashtag to discuss things, to categorize it so that other people can get involved in the conversation. Research into so social media highlights very clearly that if you use a designated hashtag, if you encourage people to structure the conversation by a designated hashtag, they are more likely to contribute rather than them making up their own hashtag or indeed using none at all. One of the reasons why the tweet wall has been quite active today is because we gave you a designated hashtag for today, hashtag smart for business, similarly in class during live tweeting. This collaborative learning and group work, the idea I was hoping would be the following. When it comes to continuous assessment or exam time, that there would be a publicly available, simple to access resource of tweets, hundreds or perhaps even thousands of tweets. Now what good is all of that if there's information overload? What good is thousands of tweets? Well, Twitter will categorize them when you search for a has hashtag based on the most popular. The students who are retweeting these tweets more, more or favoriting them or liking them or whatever the case is and they are pushed to the top of the Twitter feed so you get to see the most relevant ones as voted by students so it is collaborative not always necessarily the most important tweets but perhaps it's the most the funniest take on an item my key concept was if I'm getting the information across the students to prepare them for assessments and exams even if the students take some ownership over that and do it in a funny way while not being offensive or defamatory um, I'm happy to let it take its own course and I get, don't get too heavily involved in moderating it. After all, it is social media. Students should be aware of their rights and obligations when they make comments across social media. I do explain that to them at the start. That's what live tweeting is all about. That's what I aim to try and prove. What I'm now going to do in just a couple of minutes is give you my initial findings on live tweeting based on the survey of just one class I mentioned right now there are six classes in this college and we're the first college in Ireland that I know of trying this out. Uh, it is common in many other parts of the world but it's a pilot project here in IT Tala. My initial findings are based on the first year learning to learn class in first year department of management on the management degree and certificate program from September to Christmas. Social media usage, 91% of the respondents used Facebook at least once per day. Uh, YouTube was second, Snapchat was third. Instagram was fourth, and Twitter was way down in fifth place before this trial. Many students didn't know what Twitter was or the benefits of it. In fact, many of them didn't realize that they could use Twitter in education. Facebook was number one in another question I asked them on their favorite social media. As we'll discuss later when Christina, Dean, and I present social media trends, you will see that Facebook numbers are falling, not just in Ireland, but internationally. Um, but Facebook is still number one here in Ireland. 50% of respondents in the survey of a class of, 30, of 36 respondents uh, out of 42 in the class, so the majority of the class did respond. Half of them used Twitter daily, some of them only once per week and even less once per month. Three quarters of them did have a Twitter account before the live tweeting trial. When I probed a little further, they said we had an account but we didn't really use it or indeed know how to use it or what to use it for. Two thirds of the respondents saw Twitter as a benef beneficial aid in keeping up to date with current affairs, but let just over half saw it as a benefit in education, before the trial at least. 87% have never referenced a tweet in a college project. 16% didn't realize they could reference a tweet or indeed any social media, whether it's a blog, YouTube, Facebook, Google Plus, YouTube, any of them. They didn't realize they could reference them uh, as part of their assignments. In the Department of Management, we have a style guide which we updated just last year with the Harvard Referencing Convention on how you should reference a tweet, how you should reference a status update, a YouTube clip, etc., as they are widely referenced nowadays by our students. As for smartphone usage, almost all in the class used a smartphone. For those who didn't, the price was the key barrier. You're going to see that later again in the social media trends. That's the key reason why those who don't have a smartphone don't use one, I don't have one, it's pricing. All smartphone users definitely use social media with over two thirds accessing social media via their smartphone on at least a daily basis. When probed further, some say they access it on an hourly basis via their social media. Not just for me, not for live tweeting, but in general they access it. Most respondents were asked to, to tweet once or twice, uh, most from the iPad, but some from their smartphone most access through the Institute Wi-Fi and most had no connection issues. However, some did say there was connection issues. 
And the biggest criticism of the live tweeting trial from this initial group was lack of a strong Wi-Fi signal, depending on the room we were in. This room has a Wi-Fi router right in the corner, so we have a good enough signal. But some parts of the college where we don't have direct access or direct line of sight to a Wi-Fi router, uh, there's not as strong a signal. And that was an issue and perhaps a barrier to progression in future trials. Maybe we do need to have iPads that are, are, are 3G enabled or 4G enabled, so we won't have to rely on an uh, access point. Uh, half tweeted between 6 to 10 times during their allocated slot, which was 40 minutes, um, and some tweeted even more. And most remember to use the hashtag. So that was quite high. I wasn't expecting most people to remember to use the hashtag. I should point out there was no marks going for this. This was completely voluntary. But everyone in the class took part voluntary because they thought it, it sounded interesting and there was a buzz around it. Most remember to use the hashtag. All respondents felt the concept of live tweeting uh, was well explained and they saw the benefits of it. Most have actually searched for the hashtags during the, se the semester. In fact, over a quarter searched for it when they missed the class in order to find out what they missed, which was one of my hypotheses. Could this live tweeting be used if you missed the class, rather than calling, emailing, Moodle messaging, or going to the lecturer or one of your classmates the next day and say, what was covered yesterday in the class I missed? You could be lying at home, in bed, watching TV, sick of watching daytime TV, and decide, let's see what's being discussed in class so I don't fall behind. Take up your smartphone, search for the hashtag, and your classmates are keeping you informed live of what's happening. And a quarter, over a quarter, did this when they missed class so they didn't fall behind. 10%, only 10% used it for a revision. It should be noted, however, there was no end of semester exam. So the results from this current semester's trial should be more interesting, and I'm expecting to see a much higher amount of people uh, using live tweeting for revision if they had an end of semester exam. Interestingly, 10% said they used it for the novelty effect. One person said, it's the fact that IT Tala is moving with the times and creating industry-focused uh, students, giving them the skills they need for industry because they'd be expected to do this in their jobs. And 70% said they were posting to see or accessing to see what the rest of their class were doing. Very briefly, because we're going to pass on in just a couple of minutes to Stephen Howell from Microsoft. I know time is pressing on some of the skills that the students felt they uh, developed because of social media. Well, here's all that applied. Almost half said their multitasking skills were developed. Similarly, their listening skills. 80% believed that their summarization skills were developed. Over, uh, at half, 50% said their communication skills were improved because of it. 72% saw a big increase in their social media skills and 68% on their technology skills. 72% did say, however, they'd be more likely to live tweet if there was a final exam. That's some of the hypotheses that I'm testing with the current group of students today. 89% would be more likely to tweet if we gave them some marks. Again, with some of the groups in this semester, I am offering some bonus marks. Bonus marks meaning they are not being forced to do it within their CA, but if they do is they have the opportunity to get between 3 and 10% extra on top of their marks. Um, so that uh, it's extra credit, basically. And that has incentivized them to do so. Most respondents believe that the grade should be between 5 and 10. Before I saw these results, I had started offering between 3 and 10% bonus marks. So that's consistent with what the students were suggesting. I'm surprised they didn't say 50, 60% extra marks for live tweeting. It was an interesting point, however, that they didn't necessarily see that maybe they shouldn't get any marks for it because there are inherent benefits without giving them marks. Overall, 82% found the trial interesting. Further, 82% would encourage other lecturers to try it, and mostly if there was an exam at the end of the module. The demographics, well, this is first year, semester one in the business uh, degree program. And finally, the current trial at the moment is running with first year marketing, first year management, first year accounting, third year management, and they all have an exam at the end. And there's a current class who are here today, or one of the three classes I teach in uh, social media communications for first year computing and IT management, of which there's 160 students, uh, and that is running with them. Uh, but there's no final exam. That is a 100% assessment module. So the final results that I'll collate over the summer and present at various conferences, including here again in IT Talent in September, will be based on not just the trial 
results from what I just presented in the winter semester ending Christmas 2013, but also these six classes that are currently engaged in the trial as part of the teaching and learning forum. Uh, something I'm very proud of, and I should say the students did the work, so I, I, don't, I can't take the credit, but some of the students who are sitting right here now today managed on the 12th of February to get ITTSMC, the top trending hashtag in Ireland, for that day. That day happened to be the day where we had the worst storms in 25 years, so at 8 o'clock that night, probably because power started going out, that was knocked off the top, stop, top spot by storms and that became the highest hash, uh, trending hashtag in Ireland. What this means is more people were talking about hashtag ITTSMC, social media communications, in Ireland than any other hashtag for eight hours on this day, which boosts the rankings of the college of the research into social media. It shows um, the, the class in a very positive light. And I can't take credit for this. The students really got into it and they're the ones who live tweeted. And one student during the class raised her hand and said, just to let you know we're trending. And I said, yeah, come off it. And he said, yes, we are. And we got to number 10, 9, 8. And we rose by the end of the class because they were spurred on themselves. I said, well, let's try and get a trending number one. And within that one hour, 45 minute class, by the end of it, and for the following eight hours, it was the most talked top topic in Ireland. Little country as we are, that's still a major achievement that the students did, not me. I just set the framework, they took it away. So it, it can tell you now what, what live tweeting can do if the students get on board, it creates engagement. For eight hours after I walked out of that class, those students were still talking about things to do with social media and live tweeting for eight hours after I left that class until those horrible storms took over. And we had people from all over the world, particularly in Ireland, journalists included, asking what the hell is ITTSMC? I didn't respond. The students explained it to the, to the people, including journalists, what this was all about. So I was very, very happy about that. It also created competition between the groups, because I told the next day's class, I said, you can't let that group win. This group here, 1B, who actually got it live tweeting, I said the next day on Wednesday, you can't let that group win. Let's try and beat them. And they tried, but they haven't since. So it creates competition. Okay, that's uh, me finished on the first part of this, this uh, National Seminar series. I'll take a couple of questions perhaps on live tweeting. Um, so Brian Mullen, our AV guy here in IT Talent, is asking, was that live tweeting, sorry, that, that reaching the top trending position a normal situation or was there any abnormal fa factors to take into account? Um, the answer is, I, I actually don't know if it was because there wasn't much else happening in the news. If it had been a day to where there was a major report announced, a major government controversy, or if those storms had have come in six hours earlier, would we still be able to say that we were trending for eight hours as number one in Ireland? I don't know. It depends on whatever is in the news. So on a slow news day, it is possible in a small country like Ireland to get things trending. Um, all you need to do is get a, a certain number of people behind you and get the snowball or ripple effect. We had 55 students in the class together with me and their, their, their classmates and friends joined in and lots of people asked, what's this all about? Uh, so 55 were the in initial students involved. Now, uh, 55 people can get something trending in a small country like Ireland, great. That's got a lot of potential for business and marketers. Uh, if there happened to have been big news or press releases or something important on that day, would we be pushed out of the top 10 trending? Perhaps, maybe we got lucky. And we, haven't been, we have not managed to replicate that since then. Yeah, sure, there were, 30, there were 42 students in the class and I think 36 took part in the research. Now that was just the one class, as I said at the start, we're, I'm just giving you the initial findings of the first class. This semester there's about 400 estimated taking part in the trial. So when I add those 400 to the initial 42, we'll have a good enough sample that I can analyze over the summer and have more concrete figures for the summer or for September, which I'll be presenting again. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Phil? Do you think it creates a, a herd mentality though? It's sort of a group thing. Yes, so does social media, or does live tweeting create a herd mentality? Social media in general can create a herd mentality. Um, I'm speaking next week, Pat, Pat Rabbit is the Minister for Communications, he asked me to speak next week on a, a town hall meeting on the negative side, the dark side of social media. 
and the herd mentality, cyberbullying, privacy issues are some of the things I'll be speaking on. Uh, and social media definitely creates that herd mentality. We can look back at cases like, in very public cases, the Lord McAlpin case in the UK, where people just jumped on the bandwagon, so to speak, and automatically thought this person was guilty of something he didn't could do, he, he didn't commit. So in large-scale social, uh, large-scale cases such as Lord McAlpin in the UK, or indeed small-scale cases like 55 students in a class having an opinion on something, the herd mentality I have found certainly does kick in. Time for just one or two more before I pass over to Stephen. And remember, when we have the panel discussion, you can answer. You can feel free to ask any questions on social media and education. Ellen. Okay, so are there any departments or faculties where live tweeting wouldn't work? My initial hypothesis was that rather than specific to faculties, I wasn't sure if it would work if there was a non-theory-based subject. So in maths, for example, or practical subjects, I'm not sure how appropriate this would be. I had some, when I asked some lecturers to take part, some of them were economics, some of them were accounting lecturers, maths lecturers, and I said, maybe an extended trial later could add in non-theory subjects. But my hypothesis is that for theory subjects that allow people to, um, uh, to, 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 to distribute theory, to retweet theory, <coughs> is going to be more appropriate. Having said that, one of my colleagues, and I've had a few colleagues who have been very good to be uh, part of the trial, um, we have Jerry Phelan, we have um, Peter Garrity, and I have Gary O'Regan. Three lecturers that have been good enough to be part of it. Jerry Phelan is an economics lecturer, and he gave out a formula and this was a test to exa answer exactly that. He gave out a formula and encouraged students to live tweet for those who weren't there to explain the formula. It was one of the best engagements and one of the most remembered formula. He said in, on the initial, uh, the initial discussion in class, most of them seem to get the formula. Now that's hearsay from a conversation with Jerry Phelan. I'll have to investigate and research to see how relevant that is to the hypothesis. But I believe personally from the initial research is that on theory subjects, no matter what faculty or discipline, on theory subjects this can work. Whether it can on non-theory subjects, practical subjects, that's, that's another matter, I'm not sure. We'll have to wait to see.